Um, uh, that group is made up of Germany, Australia, Serbia, and Ghana. We're just going to start uh, start from the top. Let's start with Germany, Brett. Um, let's get some uh, your general thoughts about uh, Germany. Well, in my opinion, I think they're the clear favorites for the group. They've got, I would argue, the deepest team in the group. Mm-hmm. And, yep. I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory. I think they're going to be moving on. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would take a lot for them to not move on. Uh, again, like a lot of other teams in this group, I think the weakness outside of Australia is at goalkeeper. I don't think, you know, Noor, Visa, or Butt have really, you know, blown anybody away this year. I, you know, when you look at their defense, there's some, there's some good guys on that team, like Philip Lom, who's the captain, um, Marcel uh, Jansen, who's had a good season for Hamburg, and Hamburg, and um, uh, Sacker. And then in the midfield is where, you know, you get, you have some younger guys starting, like Tony Cruz, who may not have started um, had there not been some injuries to some very big guys on the team. But you still have Schweinsteiger uh, and Marco Merin. And then on uh, the striker area, you still have Podolski, who could actually play as well as Thomas Muller, a midfielder spot. And then, of course, uh, of course you've got Klosa and Gomez, who are probably your starters up top for Germany in the World Cup. It's still a formidable team. It, it's not the team they probably wanted to uh, to start with. And we should see a lot of Stefan Kiesling, too, regardless of the fact that he didn't finish the, the, the season strong. Uh, I, I would imagine that we'll see a lot of him. He kind of reminds me of Klinsman in a lot of ways. So uh, we'll see some of him in the World Cup. The next team is uh, Australia. And this is my number two in the group, Brett, but uh, I'm going to let you start again with some of the, your general feelings about the team. Uh, they're very, they're, they're, once again, they're another deep team. They got some really quality players. They're old players yep. that are going to be starting for them. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens to them after this cup. They're, they are probably the strongest team in the group as far as goalkeeper goes. Yeah, absolutely. Schwarzer was golden for Fulham this year. And uh, all the rumors say point to the fact that Arsenal want to get their hands on him. Um, but outside of Schwarzer on defense, you still have Lucas Neal back there. Uh, Craig Moore, who's played for Newcastle, who's played for Rangers, who's played for Munchen Gladbach. Again, though, uh, all these guys are old. Chipperfield, Neal, Moore, none of them born after 78. In fact, Moore and Chipperfield were born in 75. So you can do the math there, and you can figure out how, how old these guys are. Uh, Luke Wilshire uh, will probably also start at one of the back positions, probably right back. Uh, he's done well for Dynamo Moscow this year. He's played, the last couple seasons, he's played like 48 games. Uh, but he used to play for FC, FC 20. And for some reason or not, FC 20 loves Australian players. I mean, a, a lot of the guys on this team have played for FC 20 um, in, in the Dutch League. Um, then you hit their midfield. You've got Emerton, Bresciano, Grella. They list Cahill as a midfielder who probably plays striker. Same with uh, Richard Garcia. And, uh, of course, the one guy they're going to definitely start at striker, even though he's much more uh, like a natural uh, winger as he played for Liverpool, and that's Harry Cool. And to me, this is the second strongest uh, team in the group, and I expect them to do a lot better than people think, and we're going to see them against the United States not long from now. And I think that the lineup that we see Australia try to put out for that game is going to be the lineup they're going to try to put out for the actual World Cup. Um, We're going to move on to Ghana. And um, Ghana has the same problem in a lot of ways, but I'm going to let you uh, start off the talk, and that's a goalkeeper. Yeah, the goalkeeper spot is not very deep. Um, probably going to go with King Kingston, which is an obvious. He has the most caps with uh, Ghana. But yeah. you know what? Ghana is going to be Ghana is going to be my uh, Cinderella team again mm-hmm. this year. I think they're going to I think they're going to come out and surprise. They've got a, uh, uh, a kind of a uh, an experienced team with a lot of young players. I mean, they have, I'm looking down the list, they've got quite a few players that are 19, 20, up to about 24, mm-hmm. riddled in there with uh, some 29 and 30-year-olds. Um, they've got some experience. They've got some talent. They're going to be, I think they're going to be really quick to the ball. They might not be over-tactical, but they will be, I think they will uh, move on. My only problem, yeah. The, my only problem with all the young players. Look at the teams they play with, with uh, or at El Zamalek, uh, Betcham, Chelsea, 
you know, which is actually in Ghana, Rosenberg of Norway. I, I you know, I'm just thinking Al Saad. I'm thinking these are not uh, these are not great teams. And then you look at the goalkeeper, as you mentioned, Richard Kingston. He played a whole four games for Wigan this season, and that's the best keeper they've got. That's Problem City. The best thing that this team has going for them is their defense, um, which is, uh, you know, you've got John Paintsill, who played, had a great season for Fulham, and has been playing game after game un unless he's injured. Uh, you still have John Mensa, who plays for Lyon, um, although he was on loan to Sunderland. He, played, he still played half the season, which, you know, is not bad. Uh, my problem when you talk about this team is they're going to end up having to play guys like Stephen Appiah because of Michael Essien's knee injury not making the team. You're going to see guys like Stephen Appiah who's played a whole two games for Boulogne um, uh, this season in the Serie A. And so th the pressure is going to be on Sully Montari to kind of just hold that whole midfield. And you can say, well, they got the Boateng guys. They got Derek Boateng and... Kevin Prince Boateng, but again, they're not guys that have played a whole lot in the last two seasons, and I just don't think they're going to hold up. Although I do like uh, Asamo Gian, the striker in particular, who plays, uh, he's a teammate of Boca Negras for Rennes. Good player. I like him a lot. I think, yes, that's a guy you got to keep an, uh, an eyeball on if, if you're anybody else in this group. Uh, but my overall thing is just not enough um, midfield strength too much youth, uh, and, and too much youth on teams that are not very good. We move on to Serbia, and that's the final team that we're going to review in this group. Um, and I'm going to, again, just let you kind of kick things off. Serbia is a very talented team. They've got some really strong players, especially in the back line. Um, again, as we mentioned beforehand, outside of Australia, once again, Serbia is going to suffer uh, in the goalkeeper aspect. That's for but. sure. They're, they they have some very talented players and they could they could pose a threat. They do. I mean, you still have Stankovic playing midfield, uh, who plays game after game for Inter, so you know he's always a threat. The only problem is, while there are a lot of good, very good players around Stankovic in the midfield, there are not a lot of great players around him. And then there's some young guys like Tozic, who who you know is in the Man United camp and has been playing there, and then you've got uh, Milan uh, Jovanovic, who is in the Liverpool camp. You know, these guys, between the two of them, have played two games for those those clubs. And that's where you start seeing that inexperience, and you start wondering, wow, is Stankovic going to have to play midfield and, and carry the, the, the um, uh, you know, the water in the midfield all by himself? It looks like it. They're really strong in their center back and left back positions to the point where we, we might not even see Nevin Subotic, who all of us Americans had coveted and, and wished he would have played for us. And has played 67 games in the last two seasons for Borussia uh, Dortmund in the Bundesliga and performed profoundly well. He may not even get to play or start for this team. But you are right, Brett. The, the goalie situation is wretched for uh, this club. Um, the most experienced goalie you have is going to be playing and has been playing most of the games for this team is um, uh, Vladimir uh, Stojakovic, who played a whole four games for Wigan. That's just Trouble City right there. The one guy in my book to look out for is Marco Penelic. He plays for Ajax, formerly played with Hertha Berlin uh, before they started stinking, and he has 16 goals in 25 games for Ajax. Again, somebody to look out for, keep your eyeballs on for this group. Um, so, Brett, what are your what are your two teams? Let's just go in order. One, two, three, four, uh, and then we'll know who makes it and doesn't. I'm going to go with Germany, Ghana, Australia, and Serbia. Wow. Well, that's putting a lot of faith in my book in the, uh, the, the Ghanese um, youngsters. They're going to miss my Cinderella team, so... I know, I know. I'm just... Whew, that's a stretch, and I'm going to have to go with Germany, then Australia, because of the injury to Michael Essien. If Essien plays for Ghana, that's a different team. And then Serbia, I think their midfield completely lets them down. I think their goalkeeping is horrendous. I think they're out. They're three and gone. So those are my top four. Uh, Germany, Australia, Ghana, 
Serbia.